What's going on guys? I am Michael Anthony. I'm a wedding and portrait photographer based in Los Angeles, California. And today we are talking all about the MagSphere. Guys, this is one of my most favorite flash photography tools. It's incredibly versatile. It can pack up easily in your bag and can help to shape your light around the subject for the situation that you find yourself in. Now, the common misconception about this flash tool, however, is that it makes your light softer. So oftentimes, we see photographers on location taking an environmental portrait where their subject is very small in frame and they'll slap this thing on their flash and they're doing it because uh, the misperception, like I said, is that it makes your light softer. And you guys can see in the images here, this tool does not actually make your light softer. In fact, the only way to make a light appear softer is to make the light source larger than your subject. So, or a large in relationship to your subject, should I say. One of the things that this tool does do is that it will help, help you to spread the light out, right? So we use this often oftentimes when we're indoors trying to light up a room or when we're trying to add light evenly to a scene. In fact, my favorite way to use this is to backlight things in order to make that water or smoke or whatever you are backlighting appear on camera. So we often will use this out in the rain. One of the things that we'll do is we'll position it behind water and we'll backlight the subject and the water and we'll make that water appear on camera. Now, Couple things you can do with this that make it really, really versatile. You can add a mag gel to the inside here and modify the color while still allowing you to spread that light out in a 360 degree manner. Taking this off, removing it, you're revealing the Fresnel lens of a common speed light or a uh, flash head like this. What that's gonna do is gonna give you a very specular light. Generally, specular lighting is not always a great thing on a typical portrait. It is good if you're doing a fashion portrait or if you're shooting out in direct sunlight or something like that. Sometimes specular light and specular highlight can be really, really good, but it does tend to accentuate flaws in the skin. It can make people's skin appear oily. So putting this on your flash can help to reduce that specular. However, if you're taking an environmental portrait and your subject is further away in frame, it's not always gonna be the best way to use it because you're not gonna really notice the differences. By the way, if you're looking to up your lighting game, be sure to download our free lighting formula PDF that contains 10 lighting diagrams from our favorite images, along with full exit data and post-production information. You can download yours for free by going to the link in the description or by heading to www.thelightingformula.com. Another way that I absolutely love using this is to create lens flare inside the camera. We can put this on top of our flash and fire this directly into the camera about two or three inches away, something about this close right here. And that'll actually allow us to create the illusion of lens flare from golden hour or from a light coming right directly back into that lens. Now, if you do it without this on top of it, right? This uh, flash is gonna be very hard. It's gonna fire into the lens and it's going to give you very uneven highlights and shadows across your frame. Whereas when you put this on, because it's diffused now, it's gonna give you that even haze or glow and you can modify the color by again, placing a gel inside. It's gonna get you a really, really good glow and highlight that's gonna look beautiful. The last thing that I like to do with this is I like to use it to change the shape of my light. See, when you're using a light like this, a Profoto A1, it's already got a round head, right? So you wouldn't need to use this on a tool like this in order to get even light distribution, should I say, on a surface. However, most of the flashes that people use today are gonna be rectangular, like this one right here. And by using this, you can actually change the shape of that flash head. Now, what that does is when you position this up against the wall, so let's say you're silhouetting a subject, right? You can actually spread the light out evenly in a circular pattern, which is gonna give you a much nicer fall off and it's gonna allow for a much more beautiful uh, light pattern as opposed to the rectangular head, which you get from here without it being modified. Another way that I absolutely love to light my subjects is to use this to bounce flash into a wall. When we put this on our camera's lens, it is spreading the light out on the wall and on the surface. So by doing that, now what we're doing is we're lighting that, that surface much more evenly, which is kind of the same thing as filling a whole entire modifier when you're using a mono light. It allows that light to spread out evenly and it allows you to have much more flattering light on your subject. So those are my top ways that I like to use the Max Sphere. Thank you guys again for checking out this video. If you guys have any questions at all, please leave them down in the comments below and we will catch you on the next one.